Thank you for being with us today. Pleasure. Um, so I want to sort of like start at the beginning um, when it comes to Mangrove and the film sort of exists as um, an element in a wider anthology of films, um, mm -hmm. small acts. So can you talk a little bit um, about your vision um, for small acts as a series and how Mangrove fits in? Well, in some ways, the series started with Mangrove. That was always the sort of um, the beginning point. I didn't know, I, at first, in fact, it started 11 years ago. I didn't know what the series would be as far as, I thought it would be like one story going through a, a certain number of episodes, but it became a, a situation where there were so many interesting stories, so many interesting about black life in the UK and how, you know, this community changed the, 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 the narrative of the country, uh, changed the fabric of the country. And I, I didn't see any of that um, on screen, any of that even spoken about, really. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, it was it, it was vitally important that these pictures, these these uh, these films, got um, more than one go at it because of so many stories, and the mangrove had to be the one to start it. Um, and it was just you know it just attracted me because it was it was it's, it's always a, the movie is is a western, you know um, it's a guy who opens like you know you could say a saloon a cafe. You know, a hole in the wall in 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 Notting Hill, Labra Grove in 1968 and All Saints Road, and how that cafe turns into this huge incident, which goes all the way from this you know, modest cafe in Labra Grove to sort of you know all all the way to the Old Bailey. I mean, it's something. A court which is you know only for you know serious crimes. Crimes against the state or murder. It's incredible when you think about it. Mm. It's, um, but we're speaking now in this moment within the context of a pandemic mm -hmm. and the second wave of Black Lives Matter. Mm. And I have to ask, what sort of significance do you think the film can have now with its in the convergence of its release? Well, I hadn't thought of it that way. Um, it's just one of those things where, you know, these unfortunate events have, you know, have been going on for a long time, you know, and uh, it's one of those things which, you know, it's, I would rather not have this conversation with you, but it's one of those things which um, I am having. And it's, you know, these are stories, you know, Mangrove is, is a film starting in 68, you know, we're in 2020, and, um, you know, it, it could have been like yesterday. Yeah. And that's that's a sad thing about it, really. I mean, that's the that, that but look, there's been a lot of progress made, you know, and 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 through um, people like Frank Critchlow, um, people like Darkus Howe, Anthony Laquant, things have actually you know moved and shifted, and and and, and the fact that me and you are talking today mm -hmm. is is a is a is a, um, a sign of that, and 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 what they have done. It's, that's just a fact. But this is one of those situations where um, mangrove was a story that was vitally important for people to sort of uh, hear and understand and, and to see what was done for them. Yeah, I kind of feel like, for me, in, in viewing and experiencing the film, I think it's a really resonant reminder of what a collective voice can do. Exactly. For me, that was about, that's what Smurks is about. It's about us coming together as a collective and making things happen. The whole of these stories, all of Small Acts, all of the five stories are about when we come together, we're powerful. The whole idea of the blues mm. in, um, in, in in Lover's Rock. I mean, these communities weren't, in, weren't welcome into clubs, or there was a quota, or people couldn't come, or they, you know, again, oh, you know, no, sorry, mate, uh, no, this, 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 we got we got free now. Um, you know, so what happened? People said, okay, we'll do our own party. We we'll do this. We we'll do it ourselves. Same thing with Mangrove. This Frank Critchlow, a black-owned business, bringing it. Let's do our, ourselves, our people. Same thing, you know, we have with education, you know, hopefully get, get to see. Uh, we have an episode called Education. The same thing, the same thing with uh, Red, White and Blue. Okay, you know, you know, I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go in there and change it from the inside as, 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 as a police officer. Um, you know, that's, 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 that's a John Baker uh, picture. And again, we have Alex Wheatle, you know, him getting to know his community when he was, you know, not um, familiar with it. Mm. and seeing how the community can, can come together to make something. So it's all about us as a collective. I think, in fact, it's, it's more relevant now than ever that us as a collective 
is, we're powerful. We can actually change things. We can move mountains as a collective, as, a, as, as being together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's how I'm very happy to talk to you now as a collective, you know. When I started to, to make sort of um, films, it was very rare that I spoke to a black journalist. Very rare, if ever. You know, so the fact that things are, these things are changing, well, they should have ch changed a long time ago, but unfortunately, what hurts me more than anything is that there's a guy who had to die in the most horrific way. In public, they had to be a worldwide, this, this, this pandemic we're living in, plus millions of people marching all over the world for people to think, you know what, let me think about that. For even them to sort of think, uh, let me let me have a let me let me. So all of this has to happen for someone to think, you know, maybe we could maybe you should think about that, you know. Not even a yes, not even a yes, but maybe. So you know that's how it is. But you know we you know we, we can move mountains. We can move mountains. So I wanted to to talk to you a little bit about form. So you're a multidisciplinary artist, and you're no stranger to Am using. I? I would say that you I, are. I just do stuff. What's been going on at the Tate? <laughs> I just do stuff. I don't, you know, I just, again, I just think, you know, I just do stuff. It's about ideas mm. and yeah. whether those ideas are best uh, translated. I mean, you know, tomorrow I might think, you know what, I think it's a poem. Yeah. You know what, tomorrow, you know what, it's a feature film. But, you know, again, I'm very fortunate to be in this position that I am, that I can do that. Um, and I, I'm fortunate enough because, um, you know, like I said before, because of, there was a lot of people who, who, who did certain things before me to make me sitting here talking to you today, you know, and others, and others. So why television for this uh, mm -hmm. particular story? Well, to be honest with you, I wanted my mum to see it, you know. I want it to be accessible to everyone, and I really wanted it on the BBC for that reason, that it was there, it was, it was there if you want it. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have to sort of, uh, you know, uh, have a sort of expensive prescription or, or whatever, that it's actually in your living room. I wanted to, I wanted these stories to be in people's living room because that's where it belonged, in the front room. You know, it's very mm -hmm. important that, and people to acknowledge it, mm -hmm. and people to recognize it, um, and people to celebrate it. So let's talk a little bit about these personalities that we have in our front room, that you put in our front rooms. Um, we've got Dark as Hell. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, Alfie jones mm -hmm. Um These really, really big, very important historical personalities. How did you scale that into one piece of work? Well, working with Alice Siddons, the co-writer on, on Mangrove, he is very much into research. So... Um, that was, it was all about getting it right as far as the documents was concerned. And what Alistair found out uh, was that um, there was no court records. But he found out, there, I, think it was a, I think it was a Kensington Gazette, also a local paper, who, uh, there was a journalist who was there every day who wrote everything down. So that's how we got all the, all the, all the language, all of the sort of um, the speeches and so forth and, and whatnot. And, uh, so that was an amazing research by Alistair, as well as you know, find, you know, lots of documentary elements, interviewing. You know, there was we got hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of of, of interviews conducted by a, a fantastic researcher, Helen Bart. Um, so it was one of those things when you compile all the all this information, as well as you know, uh, you know, me speaking to them directly, speaking to people directly, the people who was who were still around and then formalizing a strategy of how you tell this narrative. And for me, the narrative was always like a Western, like I said, it's a Western. It's a guy who opens a saloon and the sheriff comes to town to try and sort of, uh, you know, take it away from him. <laughs> and it's interesting, because what we're interested, the thing, interesting story about Westerns, is that they're kind of, a, they're virtually always revenge stories, which is, must, must, must be all American movies, virtually revenge stories. But this one is a, a, ret a retribution, not retribution, uh, um, a transcending film, a transcending film. Because you have the gentleman, Frank Critchlow, who starts off, we just wanted to open a cafe for his, his community. This is what I started on the cafe. And there's some people who come, and there's some intellectuals and you know, some uh, people who are, who are more political minded, but he doesn't care, he opens it for everybody. Everyone opens it for, you know, the, the, the local people, you know, the guys who just work in the nine to five and whatnot. But slowly and surely, he himself understands the situation he's in. 
he himself becomes politicized and understand the only way to stop this attack, to stop this continuing sort of harassment is to stand up for himself and stand up as a collective, you know, with the help of Darkus Howe, with the help of Antti Laquant, he realizes that this, this, we have to stand up and, and, uh, and confront the powers that be. And this is a guy who just wants to sort of, he's, he's, he's pride and joy is a cappuccino machine. And all of a sudden he's, he's been hauled to the, to, to the highest court in the land for a riot and a fray and faces the 10 years or more in prison. Yeah, and I think that's definitely an aspect that I think balances the historical weight. You had a conversation with Cornel West, and I think he says in speaking about your work that you you have this ability to stay in touch with the humanity of your characters. And Frank is very much this sort of emotional steer or mm. avatar for for us watching the film about yes. this, this emotional journey yes. of all of the nine himself, yes. but what they all must have been going through. Yes. I think, look, people would make, make say, oh, why isn't the film about Dark as Hell? Why isn't the film about Anthony Lequan? The reason why it wasn't for me, why is why, why I want to focus on, on Frank, because he's, he's like, he's me and you. He's not, you know, he's not this sort of superhero or he's not sort of, a, you know, I mean, you know, Darkus and Anthea were these kind of amazing figures, but this is this ordinary guy who gets thrust in, into the forefront of of this of this situation of this movement, if you if you if you like, um, and I that's what I want. I want to have people to have that connection, you know. And, He's and a humble man, yeah. Very much so. Um, and just to close, I, there's there are a couple of aspects of the film um, that really sort of stuck out to me. I kind of read them as this sort of really slight anachronism. So when Letitia Wright. Um, and uh, Malachi Kirby are giving their speech at the protest, you mm. can see in the background this tower being constructed. And that oh. really created oh. a sense of like presentness. So, oh. um, and I read that obviously as oh. a as reference to Grenfell Tower. So... Well, that, the, the, it's the Westway being built, yes. Mm -hmm. it was, and that's in the vicinity, of course, of, of um, well, it passes through uh, Grenfell Tower, yes. Uh, modernity being built, the superhighway, you know, um, the Westway. Um, mm. You know, that was, for me, that the whole idea of time and the whole idea of modernity within that sort of narrative is hugely important to me as far as movement and progress. Um, yeah. Yes, and that, yes, and, and yes, you, you're quite right. And a nod to Grenfell, yes. I think there's a lot to to sort of take away and to reflect on in the film and um, I think I can speak for everyone and say that we're really looking forward to what the rest of the series has to hold. Yes, yes. Um, so thank you again um, for pleasure. joining us and presenting the film. My pleasure, thank you for inviting me. <laughs>